Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're kind of, this is not live, but I'm, I'm doing this over Skype, so we're talking to John Crump of Ammoland. John, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Hank? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for coming in. So there's two things that I want to talk to people about, and I figured this would be an easy way to do it because there's kind of two breaking news things right now um, that we want to talk about here. The first one is Colt is not selling AR-15s anymore. Is that correct? Uh, yes, they are pulling out of the modern sporting rifle market totally for civilians. Wow. They're going to still sell them to military and police. Okay. <laughs> That's... Okay, we're going to talk about that. We'll get into it. I'm sure people out there listening to this or watching this are going to want to get into it. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the the uh, news circulating right now about Attorney General Barr, and he has basically a background check memo that's circulating. So we, we can uh, unfortunately look forward to some more gun control coming at us from Congress um, in the form of this uh this background check memo, which I'll also get into. You, you're you also aware of that, right? Correct, I am. Okay, so um, let's let's jump into this and start with the Colt thing. And I believe that there is a memo that the company put up on their website. I'm going to pull that up on my screen right now. Here, there we go. Okay, so this is what it says. It says, uh, Colt News. Uh, company response to questions about Colt participation in consumer markets. So I guess, John, this news has kind of been circulating here for a little while, right? This is not like brand new. Basically what this is is confirmation? It's confirmation, yes. Uh, I started hearing about this a little while ago. Mm -hmm. I could not confirm it. So if I can't confirm anything, I don't report it. Mm -hmm. But I was pretty confident that it was true. And today they released a statement verifying that it is true that they are pulling out of the market. They, they are no longer going to be selling AR-15s to the general public. Okay, so before we get into like reading this memo here, what do you think of the most important bullet points of that? Because for me, what I'm thinking, the, the most devastating part is that they are going to make AR-15s, but they're not going to sell it to the public. It's only for law enforcement and military. That seems like uh, a betrayal to me. What do, you, what do you think? Yeah, according to them, they have contracts that they have to fulfill. So they're trying to say that because we have contracts, we're going to dedicate everything to fulfilling these contracts because there's a high demand be between law enforcement and also military for the AR-15. What they say is that there's a lot of different places making AR-15s, so they don't see it viable anymore. Which, there is a lot of places making AR-15s, but I think it's deeper than just that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that it's because of pressure from outside groups, mm -hmm. and Colt, even if that is the case, they're not going to admit that, of course. Right. Is Colt independently owned? Are they part of a group? Are they traded on the stock market? Uh, they are owned by a by a number of different people. It's a uh, basically how do I say it? It's not just Colt. Uh, mm -hmm. They're owned by like a market capital firm and stuff like that. Oh, okay, but they're not the Colt itself is not publicly traded. Um, it's just owned maybe by a group that puts put together a bunch of money and then they have Colt and other properties, right? Yeah. Okay, let's, um, because uh, I know there's going to be a lot of people upset in terms of the history of Colt. So, so myself, as a gun guy and an AR-15 owner multiple times over, um, I don't actually have a Colt. That's kind of like the coveted thing, right, for gun guys, uh, Colts, especially, um, I think there's a certain time period that if you have a Colt, it means something. That's one thing I've learned. Would you agree with that? I would definitely agree with that. A lot of people think that Colts are like the cream of the crop of the ARs because mm -hmm. they were producing the ARs before anyone else besides like Armor Light. Right. But yeah. And um, so, for example, friends that I've known that have served recently have used Colt AR-6920s and stuff like that um, in combat, right, overseas, and it means something to them. 
Um, I, I think there's, you know, there's gonna, there's a lot of gun guys out there right now, like on their knees, crying, no, no, why, why did you do it? So, do you, let's, you want to jump into the memo? I'll throw it up here. Yeah. On the screen. Um, actually, let me see. Here's the memo. Okay, yeah, I'll throw it up on the screen here so people can read it. So, Colt News Company responds to questions about Colt participation in consumer markets. West Hartford, Connecticut, September 19th, 2019. Um, there have been numerous articles recently published about Colt's participation in the commercial rifle market. Some of these articles have incorrectly stated or implied that Colt is not committed to the consumer market. We want to assure you that Colt is committed to the Second Amendment, um, highly values its customers, and continues to manufacture the world's finest quality firearms for the consumer market. So. They want to feel free to jump in here anytime, uh, John. As I'm reading yeah. this, but they want to reassure they want to reassure us of that. But they're not going to make AR-15s anymore. Yeah, we we are committed to the Second Amendment unless you own this rifle. Then we're not. Yeah, <laughs> like this, the way I'm reading it. But you know, they're making a business decision, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of pressure on Colt mm -hmm. to stop making them because they do have a lot of government contracts. And let's say a Democrat becomes president and stuff like that will they mm. hold it against cult that they're producing ar-15s right who knows who so knows they, what the reason so, and they is. so according to these people not to me the ar-15 which some people have wrongly labeled an assault rifle that's not what ar stands for stands for armalite um you know it's been it's like this black evil gun right yeah that's what we're hearing here they treat it as though it's like the ring from Lord of the Rings. You know, mm -hmm. when you put it on, it drives you mad. Yeah. And for some reason, <laughs> they think that's what the right. AR-15 is. Yeah, that's what it means to some people. To most of us, we know what it is. I mean, even recently, there was a guy, I believe it was in Georgia, that um, defended his home using an AR-15 against three masked, um, you know, robbers. Uh, armed, armed and masked robbers. So, you know, to a lot of people, it's a freedom tool. It's something that allows you to defend yourself. I always say you don't have anything you can't defend. It's one of the best uh, freedom tools or t uh, defense tools that exists out there. Yes, some bad people have used it to do bad things, but that that goes for anything. That goes for baseball bats, hammers, cars, planes, all that kind of stuff. They do good things. They're tools that do good things and have changed the world, but people can use them for bad things. Uh, let me let me uh, jump back in here. So uh, they go on to say, the fact of the matter is that over the last few years, the market for modern sporting rifles has experienced significant excess manufacturing uh, capacity. Given this level of manufacturing capacity, we believe there is adequate supply for modern sporting rifles uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, I, I think... That part of it, I can um, I can agree on. I think that we've seen. If you go to Shot Show, if you see what's going on, it's like everyone's making an AR-15. Can't argue that. There's lots of companies that are just not uh, thinking outside of the box and making AR-15s. So that's uh, that's convenient cover for them, right? Yeah, I think it's a uh, perfect cover for them. Yeah. All right. So let's just jump. Uh, yeah. Sorry. If you wanted to say something else, go ahead. Yeah, I said allegedly that would be. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, why would the person, that's like, it's so, it's so crazy to, uh, you know, to, to think like the, the people who were the originators of manufacturing ARs, because everyone and their mama is making an AR, they're like, oh, we're not doing this anymore. I don't, I don't know. I'm just not buying into that. Um, let's go on here. On the other hand, our war fighters and law enforcement personnel continue to demand Colt rifles. See, this to me negates everything that they just said. Um, so it says, on, other, on the other hand, our war fighters and law enforcement personnel continue to demand Colt rifles, and we are fortunate enough to have been awarded significant military and law enforcement contracts, which really hurts my soul when these companies that's all they care about the military contracts they don't they can care less about the civilian market i always held that disdain for hk now i have to put colt in that category uh, currently these high volume contracts are absorbing all of colt's manufacturing capacity for rifles colt's commitment to the consumer markets however is unwavering we continue to expand our network of dealers across the country and to supply them with expanding lines of the finest quality 1911s and revolvers um 
At the end of the day, we believe it is good sense to follow consumer demand and to adjust as market dynamics change. Uh, Colt has been a stout supporter of the Second Amendment for over 180 years, remains so, and will continue to provide its customers with the finest quality firearms in the world. Very respectfully, Dennis uh, Villou, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that properly, President and Chief Executive Officer. So um, what was your first thoughts on this when you saw this, man? I, I think it's been coming for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, you you got to admit that the AR market is kind of flooded. I mean, you can pick up an AR for under 350 now from okay. like PSA. Right. So, I mean, I can buy into it a little bit, but Colts have been in demand, and the demand's not going to stop just because other people are producing ARs. Right. So that part, they kind of lose me on. Right. I, and I they've think been I'll... they've been the premier brand, so it's like if yeah. um, you know Mercedes Benz has been making cars for for probably you know for a long time. I don't know over a hundred years, right? We mm -hmm. can say safely. It's like Mercedes Benz going. You know what? We're not going to make cars anymore. Everybody's making cars, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like Ford saying that. Let's say Ford decides. Lots of people out there, Ford fans, or whatever. Like you know what? Ford's like, listen, there's just too many people making cars. We're only going to make cars for the government from now on. Yeah, I mean, that is true. Yeah. Um, and I kind of see it that way as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. There is tons and tons of political pressure on companies like Colt mm -hmm. that have government contracts. And in the end, it's all about making money and protecting their bottom line. Yeah. So you think at the end here, this is all about Colt keeping up uh, with the government contracts, kind of like trying to play both sides of the fence. They want the government contract money. Uh, they want that. They definitely don't want to lose that. They do want, in some ways, they want to keep the civilian market, but they're not going to make ARs anymore for the civilian market. Um, I think they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They're trying to have it both ways. And uh, I don't know, it kind of sucks for me, man. I don't know what That's people feel out there. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, that, that's what I've been hearing. I've been beating yeah. the bushes on different uh, gun rights advocates and other people, and also people in the industry as well. And mm -hmm. the the uh, prevailing feeling is it's cults trying to protect their bottom line by keeping people in government appeased in case, you know, mm -hmm. like the Democrats take over. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I mean, and so far, so far as there, so so far as we know that the rifles that Colt's making, other than the AR-15 or uh, two two three five five six, they were doing what? Uh, were they doing three oh eight? Where? What else were they up to? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that was basically it. I don't think they really have too much of a of a rifle market. Mm -hmm. So that makes it easier for them to say, "Hey, we're not going to produce any rifles." Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm pretty disappointed by by this, like uh, by them actually coming out and putting it all out there and letting everyone know. I'm interested to see how everyone's going to react if they're going to react the same way as me. I know, like you're saying, there are lots of cults out there. It's always been a highly valued thing, and now cult is saying, yeah, we're not going to make it anymore. So whoever has it, they have it. Do you think that's going to shoot up the price of uh, of cult AR-15s? In the short in the short term, I don't think so. In the long term, probably. Okay, yeah. In the long run, when this, I mean, there's there's obviously a ton of them out there. I think the more valuable ones probably go back to what like pre uh, pre like Clinton era stuff. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the, yeah. the pre bands. Yeah, pre bands. Okay, so those are the most valuable ones. For the rest of them, there's lots of them out there. I don't know. There's something. And does Colt, um, does Colt actually manufacture the lowers, do you know? Or does someone else make them? It depends. Okay, uh, yeah. It's kind of tricky. Um, yeah, because there's only so many forge, like, uh, forges here in the country, right, That to, to make um, AR lowers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, most AR manufacturers start out with uh, uh, a forged um, AR, mm -hmm. like, it's not even 80 percent i think it's like a like a 40 percent or something like that i can't mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. and then they mail it out and stuff there's only like seven of them in the in the country that produce them maybe i'm wrong with the number yeah. but uh, colt they make 
some of their higher end ones themselves, um, not the lowers, but you know, they mill them out and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, like the expanse line and stuff like that are made by other manufacturers. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to leave this open. I'm going to post this. This is not, even though like we're recording it, like it's live because the two of us are talking to each other live. John just hit me up and said, Hey, this is going to be an article that we're putting out. Um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to post this up and I think maybe you guys will post something up as well and we'll leave it here for everyone to let us know your comments. What do you think about this? Do you own a Colt AR15? Did you use it, you know, when you served? What's your idea of this? Are you going to keep buying stuff from Colt or maybe, you know, are you done with it? Um, something to think about. When when are you guys going to have an article up, John? Um, I'm writing it right now, so hopefully it'll be up either tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest. All right, cool. All right, I look forward to that. So do you want to switch gears now, or you do you have some more that you want to say about that before we switch no, over? No, switch gears. There's not too much to know about the Colt right yeah, now. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we'll see what everyone's reaction is. If you want to know my reaction, I'm kind of like disappointed in Colt. It's a symbolic move that I don't think they had to do. They could have just run down the production numbers maybe. And slow, but they're obviously still producing it for the military uh, and law enforcement. They could have just supplied those out and just maybe run down what they have on hand for civilians and not done this. It seems like they're trying to, um, you know, uh, like make a statement to appease someone out there. Thanks a lot, John. Um, I look forward to doing this kind of stuff with you again. I think it adds like an extra dimension. I could just get up there. And people could just see my pretty face, but now they get to see two pretty faces and at least get to, you know. (laughs) It's the new partnership. (laughs) Yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks to the folks at Ammo Land for helping us out. Um, Okay, that's it, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified whenever we put this stuff up. Make sure you check out Ammo Land. I'm Hank Strange. I'll see you. I'm out of here. Peace.